All right, y'all, it's 99 Jams. It's Miami's number one for hip-hop and R&B. It's the Pack Jam Morning Show, DJ Nancy 305. CC doing the most. What up, Tom? Hanging out, holding it down for Super Cindy. And we got a special guest. Yes, we do. In the building. Is well, well, you. I don't know if I want to say <laughs> guest. I mean, you are family, but... Well, boy, you you are one of them guys right now. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Not. Kevin Hunter hanging out with us. Hey, what's going Ooh. on? How you doing, man? I'm good. Sunrise to everybody. Positive vibrations. That's what I'm talking about. You hanging out in Miami? Yeah, I live out here now. So so this is home? This is home. There's me. no way this is home, man. You not pass through here and not see the Dade County Ambassador, sir. Oh, yeah. That has not happened. <laughs> well, you know, two years ago, I tried to get the Dade County Ambassador to uh, get part of this Waffle and Yankee Fitted Fest that I Ooh. threw out here. Uh -huh. And he was busy doing the classic, so, you know. I, I definitely was. Okay. Yeah, I came so, so that's you behind the scenes doing yes, that? Yes, yes. That was my event. Yes, oh, it was. okay. Yes, it was. Nas, so, Goody Mob, uh, yeah, Fabulous, sir. and... Um, that was over at the Mirror Miami Theater. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Sir. So you plan on bringing that back again this yes, year? Yes, yes, I will. I will bring it back next year. This year has been a trying year, but I definitely plan on bringing it for next year in a bigger and better way. Okay. And involve you this time. We need you in the building. Yeah, nah, we, we definitely going to be there. Okay. We definitely going to make that I got to watch my best friend, Boogie. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves the boogie. Yes, Everybody sir. Everybody loves the boogie. So, but other than that, man, how, how's every how how are you? Like, how's I'm good. I'm you? good. I can't complain. You know, I'm, I'm healthy. You know, health is wealth all the time. You know, I'm fighting all the low vibration, vibrational people that's trying to you know, throw slander on the situation. But uh, me and my family, my entire family, you know, we we rising to the occasion. We rising through the, all of the uh, nonsense, if you will. You know, and uh, I hope to clear up a few things today with y'all, you know, and in my new hometown. I originally come from New York City, Brooklyn, bred and born. I hear that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm now part of the Broward County, uh, uh, what you want to call it, posse. And, I'm like, <laughs> and I came down here before COVID, so, though, you know, I didn't come with the whole rush. <laughs> I'm looking at everybody that I'm came. Say, so you brung it down here, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> But, but I, I, I'm mad at everybody that brought all them high taxes and all the rent raises. That's not me. I was here before all that. I'm not part of them New Yorkers and them, them displaced people. I came before, so I'm part of y'all. That's what's nah, up. That's what's up, man. Well, it's good that you're here. Thank you. Um, it's good. I guess you could say that uh, you're getting a new start. Yes, sir. I, I guess you could say that. Um, yes, sir. I love this this weather. I love the environment. I'm able to focus on my health more, you know what I mean? And being near to my son, my son's in school at FAU in his last year. You know, that was one of the main reasons I came down here. And uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving the whole reinvention. That's what's up. Okay, well, uh, speaking of your son, how's he doing and how's school going for him? He's doing great. I mean, he's a fine young man. Obviously, through all of it that's happening with um, his mom, you yeah. know, and all of the media scrutiny. He has to keep a strong head. You know, he kind of grew up in this whole thing. So, you know, me and him, we, we stay in close contact. You know, we go to the gun range. We do a lot of things. Um, and his head is real straight. I try to keep it on the straight and narrow, you know what I'm saying, so he don't get too caught up. I want to uh, touch on the fact that there's been a lot of misconceptions and, 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 and negative, uh, negatively printed and wrong stuff about what he's going through in terms of uh, all that nonsense. You know, yeah. you know, I don't know if, what you want to find out or know. I'm, I'm here to answer it, but just on a right. whole, it's just been uh, all wrong. Well, I know I saw something that was sad the other day by People Magazine. They said that he was evicted from one of his apartments down here in Miami due to unpaid rent. So I just wanted to see... If he was all right, are okay. you down here to help him with housing? <laughs> first like. of all, first of all, let me be clear about something. Um, he's doing great. Mm -hmm. um, he's probably still living better. He's blessed. He's probably still living better than most. Um, at the end of the day, that whole situation, you know, his mom uh, purchased the apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, well, first of all, let's 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 rewind. He had some security issues at the place he was living at in Miramar. Um, Mom's uh, purchased an apartment where she planned on spending more time down here. Obviously, you know, from everybody seen in the public, they see uh, what's been happening and the, and the whole digression of that. But in the midst of all that, she still purchased the apartment for him and her. 
and planned on spending more time down here. <clears throat> she wasn't doing as much. Um, things kind of spiraled a little bit. Um, I didn't really know about it until after it was done. You know, I, I, I lean on the side, you know, obviously we've had a very public di divorce. I lean more on the side of a, a, a real practical person. I come from Brownsville, Brooklyn, you know, I grew up in the project, so it's like, you don't need as much. I don't care how much we've been blessed with. Yes, we've worked hard. We both have worked hard to provide for you and, and, and you're a blessed child, but you know, in the midst of everything that was happening, she obviously went way above and beyond because of her and her security issues that she has to purchase this apartment and he was part of it. And um, he didn't really need all of that. And when everything happened, you know, the banks froze everything up. Yeah. He was not in a position to pay $10,000 a month on the party. Which is, He's a college what, student. Exactly. <laughs> Dang. Led to purchase. Well, he was led to purchase that, but but at the end of the day, I'm going to be very transparent with y'all because I feel like we family. That was more of his mom's whole doing. and um, I'm, Financial people. Well, I have my, my financial forensic accountant auditor. expert auditor here, Eric Pettis, who's going to be on the back of me and, and, and make sure I create, I say the right things. Right, um, right. If you want to lend to the... Yeah, um, well, basically just to uh, elaborate a little bit on what uh, Kelvin's saying is that um, her financial people led her to attempt to purchase this property. We haven't uncovered yet who exactly the property belonged to, mm. but it wasn't initially a, a lease situation. It was a purchase situation. Uh. So un, unlike many uh, many families that have means, when your kid goes to college, it's not uncommon for people with means to go and buy something in the area that the kid's going to go to school. Right. Okay. Particularly in South Florida where, you know, folks want to have vacation homes. So it's not mm -hmm. unusual for a mom in that position to be able to buy a property so how she got to know about that particular uh, unit, we don't know yet, but we're looking into and, and uncovering that. Well, at the end of the day, it didn't become a purchase. Uh, it turned into a rent situation. Right. Um, but if you look at the court records to show it's an exorbitant amount of rent to pay up front, deposit up front, um, you know, paying to the association up front. No, who who rents an apartment and pays the association? So, so it was all converted and made to look like it was this rent that uh, the bank froze the funds, so the purchase couldn't be completed. So it ended so up. So what you're saying is it wasn't a renting situation; it was more of a purchasing situation. It was supposed to be a purchasing yes. yes. situation, and then it, you know, because of her absolute state and the people that were advising her that we're kind of battling now. Um, it seems as though someone was trying to take advantage. But getting back to my well, son. The other thing you got to mention also, I'm sorry to cut you off, but the other thing you got to mention is this young man left that apartment months and months ago. This story just came out as a way to discredit yes. Kelvin as well as his son in their journey to get some understanding of what's happening with this money. Right. Got so, it. yeah, it, I just wanted to just ask a question. So... Are are you saying that Wendy was, like, did she understand how you explained it? Did she understand that's what this situation was? And if not, then is that why you're saying people are taking advantage of I the feel, situation? I feel like at the time that the purchase was happening, there were a lot of issues that she was dealing with. Right. She's in a much better space now. Good. Um, And the advisors and the people that were around her, you know, after I departed, have been doing a plethora of things to get to the bag, so to speak. Okay. And getting back to my son, um, he's in a great space. You know, he kind of needed a reality check. Okay. You know, um, it's, it was very fortunate of him to be in that, that plush building with all the rappers and all the celebs or whatever, but I, for one, would rather him be on campus and or living with uh, roommates and and trying to pull herself up like any other normal college student. Right, just living doing. living normal yes, college life. Yes, and he's back down to that reality in a sense. He's still blessed. Um, he's had that reality check. He's working, and you know, I, I'm just you know, I'm not happy that his name is being smeared and slandered all in this 
in the media, but you know, for yeah. for the most part, he you know, it was a wake up call for him, and uh, he's doing fine now. So how how was your how was regardless of whatever is going on in the media, and and I'm talking from a dad perspective because I'm a right. dad myself. Right. How was the relationship between you and him? Forget right. all the media. Forget all the scrutiny. Just this is Kelvin and my son. You know Junior, what? Like, how how was how was that situation? Today, you know that's 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 my pride and joy. Look, that's my firstborn. He's a spin image of me. We are great. Um, we've had a road. I mean, of course, I know I, I know you've had. We've had a road, and and, and I didn't want to go down that road because again, I as a father, like I can. I couldn't imagine going through that road that you went through. Right. I couldn't imagine that. It was painful. It was very painful. It was um, It was trying. I have all the faith in God. I've always, you know, and, you know, it's funny now he's um, going to church and he's understanding spiritually where he needs to be as well. And I'm so happy about that. But uh, in the beginning, it was rough. You know, it was very public. It was, uh, it was like any other divorce, you know, sans... All of the drama, you know, with a, a, a my ex-wife feeling the way she felt and, and trying to, you know, you know, he's our only son. So obviously, you know, you try to make him pick sides. I never did that. And I remained quiet for a good while just to let things settle. But uh, I'm just glad he wasn't younger doing this whole ordeal because it probably would have been a lot harder. But today we, we were great. We were great. And um, he's actually... Through all of the uh, the pitfalls, you know, he's shaping up to be exactly what I'm want him to be. Proud and 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 and, and understanding that this is no matter what you're involved in as the son of and, and and what you've been epitomized as, you know, you have to earn your own way. You have to find your own way. You know, you have to you become your own man. And he's becoming that. He's becoming that whole wholeheartedly. I'm proud of him. That's, That's good. good. That's, That's good. Yeah. That makes me feel. As a dad, again, coming from a dad perspective, yeah. that makes me feel a whole lot better about your situation. Yeah, we eat dinner every Sunday. He spends the night at my house. We we talk. We chop it up. You know, I give him game about all that's happening. He actually, I actually want him to come here today with me, but you know, he's feeling a little, you know, and I need him to feel in a great space, you know. So I said, look, I'm gonna hold you down, but I need you to understand, you know, when the heat comes, you know, you have to rise to the occasion, and you know, we're gonna turn this hate into great. You know what I mean? And, you know, that's what I'm here for. You know, I usually stay behind the scenes, but when it comes to what's happening to my entire family and the attack that's happening, it's not just with me. You know, I, I can't stand and just watch it happen. Right. And knowing I was such a, a great part of this legacy and this history and this pop, you know, it's just, it's just you know, we got to still hold the flag up. Say less. Yeah, so. well, we definitely don't hate you. So Thank I you. just want to put that out there. You but don't. But you know. I don't hate you, but I do know I have a job <laughs> and I have to ask the questions that the people will love answers to. But I'm here. I like we could do it all in respect and be Dang. great. So I do notice you're calling yourself the king of the purple chair. King behind. King behind the purple chair. Okay. Excuse me. And a lot of fans have been saying the king behind the purple chair. So just tell our listeners of and power. everybody. Huh? The king behind the purple chair of power. That was the exact title. Okay. Well, tell, uh, explain. That's referring to the Wendy Williams and the um, the show and the umpire, the empire that y'all both made. Listen, you know what's crazy? When they first came to me with the title, and Kelvin Cowens, who was a very prolific, great writer, you know, uh, he did a great job. He came to me with the initial title. I think it was something to the effect of um, the man behind uh, Wendy. What something. And I was like, no. I'm like, you know, that. Per first of all, let's talk about the chair for just a second. I don't know anybody else in daytime television or even at nighttime, maybe Johnny Carson's couch mm. that epitomized a piece of furniture that became so iconic to people. And yes, it was gifted. You know, you know Prince realized, like most people, that uh, Wendy was the only person in daytime and nighttime and or nighttime that had the longest monologue for somebody in television. So that means David Letterman, uh, Jimmy Fallon, you name it. Uh, Are you or, speaking of like the hot topics? I'm talking about the monologue, yeah, the hot topics segment, mm -hmm. which you call hot topics, the monologue where someone is sitting there for, with her it was uh, 24 minutes, between 18 and 24 minutes, she sat there in that chair, captivated the audience yeah, she did. with her personality, with her swag. 
and no one, not a man, no woman, not a group of women, can say that they hold that same title. Facts. That is a powerful situation. So now, when I'm talking about the purple chair of power, it was really to lend insight to how powerful that chair was and who sat in it. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to me being behind it and being the king to the queen, who I consider still a queen of daytime media, you know, we can give it to Oprah, we can give it to a few other people, no slight to who's there now, but what she did, she defined a whole situation and, and carved out a whole situation for daytime television. If it wasn't yeah. for her, there would be no real. The real, you know, no disrespect to those women, but they only existed off of Wendy controlling that time block for Fox television, which was powerful within itself. She did not come from or was cultivated from any um, any beginnings. Uh, like you see most of the daytime people, like Kelly Ripper, she was all part of the... Uh, they, uh, daytime soaps and they did uh, uh, sitcoms with her and they, mm -hmm. Ellen was the same way and we can go on and on. Wendy came from radio, this room, right. where it's theater of the mind and how she obtained that position by captivating a, a week's worth of television on the local morning show to wow the numbers was, was what started the six-week sneak peek test, which... Since that test, there's been about 300, two to 300 people to try that same test. The Kardashians, Chris Kardashian, you name it, you name it, you name it. Wendy was the only person to succeed in that test. The Real did with the telepictures television behind them, but they wanted to position her, that show behind Wendy because Wendy was so strong. So now, thus coming back to the title, the Purple Chair of Power is just that. Me being the king behind the queen to help... Uh, I want to say the right words, to help mold what her talent was and, and, and become a show and become a, me and myself become a common denominator of every department when it, came to the, when it comes to that show uh, and, and immersing myself, my family, and what we gave to that show, I'm not proud to say it was kind of like the demise of my personal life and what the car crash that came with it because we dedicated so much to it. So yeah, I'm gonna stand behind the fact that I was the king behind the queen of the powerful chair that still and will always be iconic. But I mean, I, I would think you would say that too because that was your wife, correct? Yeah, well, people wanna know why I said it in the business sense. I mean, when it comes to personal and what and what we, what I stood for as terms of uh, being the king to her queen, of course, you know, it never was supposed to be uh, me there permanently the way I was, you know, I, 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 I represented her and managed her and wanted to get things started with the show to get her in position because that was my wife, that was my people, you know, from a hood perspective, that was my girl. And like, if we walk in the hood and you write, your girl is out and look, you my girl, ain't nobody messing with you, look, let's, let's, let's hold it down. Right. So that's, that's what, I, that's what it was supposed to be. But it turned into be, I don't want you to go. I need you to be here. Look, you know, we got to watch out for all these vultures, these snakes, these salamanders, these sidewanders. Like, you know, hey, I need you here. So I stayed. And, you know, unbeknownst to the people that, uh, the production company that was there trying to um, always divide and conquer, you know, we, 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 we were forced to be reckoned with. And, you know, it was what it was. Well, you did eventually end up leaving the show, correct? Or I, stepping back. I was fired because I got a divorce. Okay. And you said that exit was like the decline for the show. The show started slowly, not just like it just went down the twos, but it was just a slow decline of things not working. People weren't doing what they were supposed to do, however you want to speak on that. But I guess I just would like a little bit more clarity for those who are not in this business. You know, radio people, TV people, we could probably understand what that means. But for the fans who tune into Wendy and she's still doing hot topics, she's still talking about the things everybody wants to talk about. What did that mean when you say once you was let go, the show declined? Well, first and foremost, like I said, uh, personally, you know, what we were going through behind the scenes was was a lot. I mean, I take accountability for my actions, you know, for what's obvious out there, obviously out there. Um, but what we was going through when it comes to our health issues and whatnot, it was a lot. And it was solely on me 
from a personal standpoint of that being my wife at the time. Now, the show was very aware of these of all things. And now it's, it's, it's obvious that they had no real compassion for the person that was really, you know, uh, pioneering, you know, that not just that show, but the whole company. You know, uh, today, Deadmau Mercury, you know, there were no successes within their within their tenure of doing uh, all of the shows and the businesses, and you know they had the Nick Cannon show, unfortunately, that that fell by the wayside, which was also something that I want to say, if it wasn't for what was happening with Wendy and me telling them to go grab Nick to fill in for Wendy, they wouldn't have even been trying to do business with Nick. But um, oh, so you helped wow. Nick? Get well, on no, TV. I, I yeah, yeah, I want to oh, say wow, I helped okay. the relation, I helped the relationship with that. Um, I feel like when everything was coming to a head with us personally, mm -hmm. that they could have took a, 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 a different approach at trying to salvage the situation. Um, I I know it was a very unique situation. You know, the only people that I know was similar to what we and, me and Wendy was doing was uh, Dr. Phil and his wife. You know, and they've mm. had a long run. That's the only people I can That's compare That's a good comparison, to. yeah, because yeah. she's always at the show. She's yeah. always supporting. I think she even has, like, little segments where well, she will speak in front a, of the camera mm -hmm. from time to time. Well, I don't know what her executive executive role was. I want to yeah. say she's an executive producer, but, mm -hmm. you know, I took the role of executive producer very seriously. Like, right. like even, like, I never, I didn't go home when Wendy went home. Like, I made sure this is my people, this is my family, this is my my life, like, y'all gotta get this right. Y'all gotta have my people's looking right. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think because of the pressure that I always kind of put on the situation to make them represent and um, project our people in the right light, they always looked at me as like a, a enemy. And, 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 you know, when the opportunity came through my own actions, Instead of them pulling us into two separate rooms and saying, all right, look, we know what y'all going through. We know that, you know, um, obviously they're concerned about Wendy and how she's feeling. And I can understand, as a woman, she probably was like, ah, you know, F that, F that dude, ah, I get it. But what was working, what was working was for a reason. So I think it was their job to pull us in separate rooms and say, listen, we need to make this work. We need to, we need to you know, Kevin is still a respected uh, producer like the other executive producer we had there, the showrunner. And I, uh, I wasn't just there in name only. I, I immersed myself, and like I said, in every department, I, I solved many situations. There were many situations where they didn't know how to deal with our, our people and our culture. And uh, we had an HBCU situation that imploded uh, when Wendy said the wrong thing. I had to single-handedly get Roland, Ma Roland Martin on, on the show mm. to uh, kind of quell that. There was the whole Aaliyah situation. I can go through a, a number of situations. I mean, Wendy, yeah, Wendy. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> Sometimes and, the hot yeah. topics became really hot. Right, right. <laughs> and, and, the, and, the, and obviously, you know, un unlike other shows um, where there are different departments, like um, Ellen with Telepictures have many departments, uh, Jimmy Fallon, there's departments to help and handle situations as they arise. Right. Deadmar Mercury is a small company, you know, that didn't have a, a vast amount of apartments at departments. And their publicity department, I want to say, was weak. And their their method of dealing with uh, issues was, oh, well, just let them work themselves out. And, you know, with our community, you can't do that because they will kill you. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. So in this situation, instead of them pulling us in the rooms, separate rooms, and trying to work out uh, a healthy resolution so that the show still maintained. They looked at it as like, oh, here's an opportunity for us to get Kev out, and we could take full, you know, take get the leverage on Wendy that we would like. At the time, Wendy was vulnerable. People people don't realize, or they might remember that she was just coming out of a rehab and the whole situation then, and I was, you know, pioneering all of her, her recovery efforts at the time. And, you know, they did not take the role to say, all right, even if we need to get Kevin out of the way, let's make sure Wendy's supported in every way, shape, or form possible so that she can soar. They didn't do that. They just looked at it as, let's just get this dude out the way. And they did. Yeah. And obviously, it, it, the sharp decline that happened, you know, because they took for granted a woman who, yes, she was mad. Yes, she had every right to be mad. 
But like most real, I'm not gonna take nothing away from her decisions and what she wanted to do because I allowed her to be mad. I never said anything bad about all of it, including what she went on the air and said when she was extremely mad. But like most men, I want to say in a, that's with a strong woman and they're a strong alpha male. You get mad and then you get to a point of, of some type of understanding. Me and her didn't get a chance to do that because so many people got in the middle of that. I feel like they didn't realize that even though maybe we would have been, we, maybe we, we would have been destined for a divorce or what have you, that we still had the room to still work with each other through it out, throughout mm-hmm. it. And they did not want that. They didn't give us the opportunity to do that. They, they, they constantly stayed influencing in her, in her, in her ear, while again she's very vulnerable, and it was sad. You know, I'll be honest with you, and a lot of people don't know this. We actually had a conversation in the midst of the divorce proceedings, just me and her privately. And I asked, I said, look, um, do you still want me to work with you? And even though she was mad, like a woman we would be personally, but she was like, yes. Mm. And I was like, okay, well, I don't really, we don't have to go through all this money stuff. It's never been about money with me. She knows that, you know, I mean, I'm glad and blessed that, you know, we, we, we acquired what we acquired, but you know, I, I'm a hustler, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. Whatever I don't have, whatever is taken away from me that God don't want me to have, I'm gonna get back. Like, I don't have no problem. That's why I walked away from the divorce as fast as I did. I had the fastest celebrity divorce in history in a year. And you know, I, I, I put it in God's hands, but at the time, you know, she was like, yeah, I do want you to work with me. And I was like, all right, well, you know, we, 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 we was somewhere remote and um, we said, okay, we're gonna go back to the mainland and we're gonna, hash this out this was during the time my son was all in the media with TMZ with the instance with me and him and we were supposed to come back and unify as a family and put out the same statement everybody else put out to give us the privacy to deal with our situation and she probably would have had to say something on the air for her aggressive fans right. which she could have and been like listen y'all I know y'all want to know what's up me and Kev is dealing with it we'll let y'all know when we got it done but they didn't want that they seen the forest through the trees and they was like, no, we need him out. We need you to stay strong and we need you, you know, and she was not as strong as she needed to be because she was still going through something, right. you know, and they took advantage of that. And when we got back to the mainland, everything changed back to, you know, Kevin's the narrative, Kevin's the reason. Kevin's the reason why uh, the substance abuse escalated and right. all of this other stuff. And Well, I do sad. have a question and it's unfortunate that y'all wasn't able to continue your professional relationship even though y'all both agree y'all will still want to work with each other but now that the show is gone everybody's trying to do their best to move on be better out of that situation do you have any contact with Wendy and are you still supporting her from afar or do you talk to her do you see her how does y'all relationship look like today um I'm gonna tell you what I will go as far as to tell you that even in the midst of the divorce even after the divorce I had to there was there were two times that I had to actually save Wendy's life. Like, when you were somebody half your life, yeah, you don't just... Now, I'm, I am on to a new relationship and I have started a new family, yes. And I know that makes a lot of people mad because they've seen the evolution. But when it comes to her and what we shared, my son's mother, you know, I don't have no hate. I know now that People are going to be shocked to see how she brings in the new year. I, I'm I'm hearing, you know, that she is, you know, getting into a great space. I know that she's remorseful for a lot of things because, you know, the irony of it all is with all of the people and the and the noise and and the influences of everybody, there's still only five people that really care, and those same five people are the only people that really care. Now, am I one of those people? Yeah. Do, do I have to care from afar and not up close? You know, because she has to find herself like I had to find myself. Like, we we obviously were tethered together and we were running, but at some point, and I want to say at the inception of the show, well, what we put into the show, we left out of the foundation of our family. We took away from our family. And... Uh, Take your time. Yeah, take your time, 
I want to let people know that uh, we still only human. Humans make some mistakes. Yes. They make mistakes. Mm-hmm. 